Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's video, I'm going to have some fall projects and some projects that are actually more fall colors. So let's get started. This first piece is a plaque that I thrifted just recently. And I like it because it's the long rectangular piece. So it's good for layering. Um, and I know I've done several pieces where the design is long and skinny. And so I made sure to pick this one up. And I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And now once I got it all dry, this is the IOD Vintage Textures. And it's the larger crackle stamp. And what I like to do when I'm doing the crackle stamp is I don't like to always put it down the same way. I like to turn it different ways so that it doesn't look so planned and that it looks more real. And so I just go all the way up and down and I use black stays on ink for all of that. And there's always going to be some little parts here and there. So I just kind of ink up different parts of the stamp. Now, once that's all through, then I pull out my IOD Kind Disregard stamp because not only did I want that crackle, but I also wanted some script on it as well. So I just made sure to put that all over the plaque too. So it seems a little busy right now, but I wanted it to not just be the crackle. I wanted to add that extra finish to it. So now I've got a foam pumpkin. And this one I actually bought at Hobby Lobby because everything's 40% off right now. Um, the ones at Dollar Tree, they just don't have this size right now at my Dollar Tree. And with the 40% off, it's fairly cheap anyway. Now, do as I say, not do as I do. But um, yes, it. I've got a big old knife and I'm slicing that pumpkin in half. Um, and I just could not find my electric knife, um, which is something that I also thrifted years ago. And I don't know what that white stuff is called on the inside of those foam pumpkins, but oh my goodness, it makes a huge mess. And the more you touch it, <laughs> those little pieces go flying everywhere. So once you get it all cleaned up, now I'm just taking that half pumpkin and I'm using a color from last year, and I'm not sure if they still carry it. It's Dixie Belle Pumpkin Spice. Now, this is a mold that I've used before, and it's a Zuri mold, and it's got some leaves in it. And they're very ornate designs, even though they just look like plain leaves. And so, um, I'm using the hot glue gun for this. Um, I didn't want to make resin pieces because they get so so hard and I'm going to be layering these and I needed them to be a little bit more flexible but because some of them may kind of hang off on the plaque I didn't want to make them out of clay so I've got two hot glue guns that I always use one is 100 100 watts I believe and the other one's a little bit hotter one has a very narrow nozzle and the other one has a wider nozzle. So um, I use the little skinny nozzle to get in those little crevices um, and then the wider nozzle to get in the bigger spaces. But also, um, I want you to think about this. If you're used to using a hot glue gun, when that glue is going through the barrel of the glue gun, that's when it's going to be at its hottest. So when I'm using these hot glue guns, yes, I'll switch back and forth because when that glue, that newer glue starts going into the barrel, it's actually harder to press down on the lever. So you can actually feel that the glue is not as hot as it was before. And one of the reasons that you want to use a hotter glue is because it just comes out so smooth and there's no bumps. Um, it's just a lot easier to use and because it's just so hot. But this is also one of those times you have to be super careful. Okay, so when you use hot glue um, for your molds, they come out just really clear or translucent. And so sometimes they take a couple coats of paint to cover them up. 
Now, um, two of the leaves that I'm painting, I'm also using one of those Dixie Belle colors that I got last year, and it was called Cashmere, and it's sort of a creamy yellow. It's real pretty, and I'm sorry, I don't know if they still carry those these year or not, but um, what I do know is they were on sale, and I'm all about getting stuff on sale. So a couple of the leaves, I use the Dixie Belle color paint called Collard Greens, and that's a really dark green that's got maybe a hint of black in it. It's just super dark, but I really like it, and I think it's really pretty in the fall. Okay, so now I'm making some molds out of clay because clay, most of the time, is going to be the cheapest thing unless you buy your hot glue sticks um, in bulk. Um, and so these pieces that I'm doing are actually going to stay on this plaque, and they're not going to hang off, and they, I'm not layering them on top of each other. So clay is the best medium for this. And this is one of the IOD trimmings mold. I believe it's trimmings three, and it's just the larger piece. And when you use clay, um, make sure to just put some cornstarch in your mold and then press it down with your thumb. And then I go back with like an old gift card and just press it down. And then the gravity just helps it to fall out. So one of the pieces is, I was planning on putting it down at the bottom, but I moved it up a little bit. And I don't want it to hang down the side and so the next two pieces I'm doing um, come from the IOD Olive Crest, and they're like the little swirl pieces over on either side. And they're um, contrasting, you know, one of them goes one way and the other one goes the other way. Um, so, you know, think about it. I bet um, if you took these this particular mold, and because these two pieces are, um, are the same. They're just um, maybe mirror images. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, you know, I've shown you before how I take molds and I make them double-sided, and it helps when you have mirror images. So um, if you've seen me use the double-sided molds before, this might be something that you could use. Now, on that olive crest mold, there's some little pieces that kind of look like parentheses, um, and I thought I was going to use them, but I did not. Um, mostly because when I was pushing that clay in, some of it kind of went over into that little particular mold. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just try it and see how it looks. But um, I didn't end up liking it. So I, I didn't end up using those pieces. Okay, so now I'm going back to that trimmings mold. And I'm going to make another one of those trim pieces that matches the one down at the bottom. Um, and if you'll notice, there's a very distinct pattern on this particular trim. So when I put the one on up at the top of those two little swirly pieces, I want those patterns to match up exactly. So um, I try to be really careful when I do place it on the mold. And also, you know, it would be really easy to lay that mold down and start it from the very beginning. But um, if you'll look at that pattern, there's three main of those little, uh, little pieces that kind of swoop down. And then on the either side of it are like little half pieces. Um, so I want it to, to look more cohesive. And so... Um, I'm getting this piece all ready, and I'm going to just glue this on with tight bond glue right on top or right just above those little swirly pieces. Okay, so all my pieces are dry, and what I'm doing now is I'm going back with Dixie Belle. It's a stain that I haven't used before, and it's called All Natural, and I really like it. Actually, um, I did a video recently, and I used the Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain, and someone mentioned that they liked this particular color. Um, so the other day when I was down there, because I needed to get some more paint, um, they had one of these, so I picked it up, and I really like it. Um, and I think it 
just goes really well in the fall. It's not too dark, but it just gives it enough texture and enough color to bring out all the details on that. And so I am just brushing it on and then I'm using a baby wipe to kind of pull it back off. And then I just kind of play with it here and there until I'm happy with the design. And But I really like this color. Um, it wasn't something that I had actually looked at before, but when one of my viewers mentioned that they liked it, um, I thought, you know, I really just need to see what that color looks like. Because Dixie Belle does have a lot of um, gel stains, um, and I, there are a lot of different colors, but um, I like the Tobacco Road, and now I'm really liking this one a lot, too. Okay, so now over to the right, I do have a little bit of the Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain, and I just want to emphasize those little creases in the pumpkins. And so um, I'm just using that to kind of paint in those little creases, and then I'm wiping it back. Um, but I noticed in the beginning that when I was wiping it back, too much of it was coming off. And so typically when I use gel stain, I don't like to let it sit on it for very long, but I needed this to be a little bit darker. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting ready to place my pumpkin on top of that little pretend urn that I've made. And this is actually some greenery that I have had for so long. Um, when my daughter um, was away in college, there was this beautiful um, home place. Um, it was very expensive up near her college. And I've had some of this greenery for so, so long. Um, and I've used it to kind of cut it up into little pieces. So the stem that actually came with this pumpkin, I'm going to put it back in there. So I'm just kind of digging into that little styrofoam so that um, that little stem will fit inside of it. And I use hot glue to kind of um, put that in all the way around. Now I'm using a low temperature hot glue gun to add my styrofoam pumpkin to it. Because in all honesty, I'm not really sure if that styrofoam would melt or not. And I was afraid that if I used my high heat glue gun, that it would just melt and it would make a big old mess. And so um, I go back and I add just a little bit more of that greenery. But this is some beautiful um, pieces. And it's just one big clump or piece of it and it has all the different colors it's got the orange and the green and kind of gold now you'll notice when i start putting those leaves up there i did paint one of them with the dixie bell barn red um, because i like that color but i felt like it was just too stark um, and so i opted to not use that and so um, actually one of the green um, little leaves, I thought, well, I might try to dry brush on it, but I didn't like it. So what I ended up doing was um, I went on and painted one of those leaves that same color that is the pumpkin. And here's the final project. So what do you think? Is this something that you would do for your home? Um, it's I'm not really sure what style that I want to say that it is, um, but I like that it's got all of those Grecian elements to it, but oh my goodness, look at the detail on those um, little leaves. Aren't they just beautiful? I just really like them a lot. And I did, um, I, I think I used grunge gray um, gel to kind of brush on them and put some detail on them, but I just think it's really pretty. And I made one of these last fall and it sold really fast. Okay, now this is something that's super easy. These are some little teeny jars that I got at Walmart, and um, you find them in the can, the canning jars, but they're just really teeny And so I'm just taking some old book pages, and um, I actually use like a little punch, hole punch that's a leaf, and I'm just gluing that on to that little jar. Now, I saw this in a magazine recently, and um, the little, the little um, punch that they used was a pumpkin. Um, but I had this leaf one, and I'll make sure to put it in the description box. But you could use any sort of little um, hole punch. Um, 
but I like the leaf. Okay, so now what I'm doing is this is some of that, um, gosh, I can't think what it's called. It's that kitchen twine that's different colors that you get at Hobby Lobby, and it's orange and white, and I just wrap it around, and then look at this little wood piece. I've had this forever, and it's this little block of wood, and it's got different holes in it, and it's got two dowels that you stick in it, depending on how big you want the bow, um, and so you just... Um, tie it around and you kind of loop the thread under and then you tie it in a little knot and it makes a perfect little bow but I've had this for a long time um, I used it a lot when I used to do um, cards and I wanted to put little bows on it but it would be something you could recreate really easy um, and I bought it I think I bought it up in Winston-Salem at a place where you could buy a lot of card making supplies now, I wanted to put like a little um, votive candle in it, but I thought, well, that's probably not going to be good because of the glue um, and the paper. And so um, the little pretend votive um, candles that I have that are by battery, they were too wide. So I just put some of those little sparkly lights in it. And these would be pretty, you know, if you're having a little occasion and you want something to sit around with some light in it. So if you're liking the video so far, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already part of our family. Okay, so this next piece, unless they're fall colors, we're going we're to use that way to describe it. But this is a little nightstand that I thrifted, and I was so excited. It was um, a really nice one. And I found it at Goodwill, and it was $9.99, which was a bargain. And then it just happened to be Senior Citizen Day, which, well, I clearly am, even though I don't feel like it. And so I got it for 25% off. So I got it for so cheap, and I was so excited. And you'll have to excuse me. I've got my hair pulled back, um, don't have a bit of makeup on. But um, last weekend, I got some hives on my face and I actually thought I had shingles, but thank goodness I did not. Um, and so I've gone all week without wearing makeup. So you have to excuse that nasty hair and that, that no makeup face. But um, I just need to make sure that those hives are gone before I got up this morning and went to church. So because I, I did want to wear makeup to church. So I'm painting this with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And I just go all the way. Now, if you've ever painted a little nightstand, um, make sure that when you paint the legs, all those little curves and details, you need to sometimes paint up underneath them. Um, because if you step away from it from farther back, then you can see if you missed any of the parts. Now, one of the things that I did is I filled in all of the little holes where the handles were with wood filler. And this is some decoupage tissue paper, and it's called Romance in Bloom. And it's really pretty, and it's got those fall colors in it. And I really like it. And so I know I've done like a little nightstand before, and I used a transfer. But the little pieces that are between each drawer, I made sure to put the transfer on that. But this time I didn't want to, but I was tried to be really careful to make sure that the tissue paper lined up. So I, I tried to be really careful with it and put it on the right way. And yes, you're still going to have that separation between the drawers, but I like it. Um, it's always okay, you know, to do it both ways. You don't always have to have all the drawers with the design on them. And I'm brushing it on and then I'm going back and trimming it off. Now I'm going to be putting some glass knobs on. So, yep, look at me with my little power tool. I love, I love my little drill. Um, and I'm just putting one hole in the center of it. And then I'm using some glass knobs. Because these drawers are not real heavy. And so um, just one little drawer knob that I get at Hobby Lobby on the weeks that they're on sale just looks really pretty in the middle. But here's the final piece, and I really like it. Now, I'm going to tell you, I tried maybe like putting a little bit of green paint on the edges 
just to see how it would look and it did not look good at all. It just made it look really muddy. And so I just painted back over that green. But there's a really dark green color in that tissue de decoupage paper. And so I was trying to kind of use that color, but I didn't like it, so I just covered it up. Okay, so this is some paper that I got from Johnelle from Decoupage Central. She sent it to me, and um, it's an owl. There's actually two, and I love owls. So I only want to use one of them. And this is a little water pen that I used to use when I made cards and stuff. Um, and so that's what I used to tear up off the pieces. And then um, I decide that I want to kind of just it be part of the owl. And actually, I was going to tear off a little bit more of it. And I started to tear it. And then I decided, see where I'm tearing it right there? I decided I wanted to keep that on it. But Johnelle also sent me some decoupage varnish and glue by Pen Art. And I know that I've been using DIY liquid patina, but oh my goodness, I love this. Um, it's not thin like DIY liquid patina, even though I do love that. Um, and it's not real thick like Mod Podge. It's, it's just a really good, happy medium um, in between those two. And I really like it. And so what I do is I go ahead and I put it all on and I'm just using a little piece of cellophane wrap to kind of pull out any of the wrinkles. But because this is like decoupage paper, you're not gonna get the wrinkles like you would with like napkins. And then I'm just using my little finger sander to get off around the edges. Now this is that big um, hole punch and it's called the crocodile or I think maybe the daddy crocodile. It's big and it will cut through wood. And I want to put um, a little hole on either side because I'm going to be hanging it. And then once I punch those holes, I decide I want to use the bigger piece. So I just kind of go right back over that hole because I want those holes to be big enough um, because I'm going to be putting some lace through it. And then before I finish it up, then I go by and I put Tim Holtz Distressing Ink all around the edges. And then after that, I pull out a crackle stamp and I use Brown Stays on Ink. And I saw, I'm sorry, I forgot to film that. Now that real wide piece of lace up underneath is something that I thrifted. I found this big bag of lace at the thrift shop and a, who can turn down lace? It was, and it's all these little pieces and I was so excited. So I made me a little, um, a little bow. It's, I'm not, I can't remember what everybody uses, but it's the little floppy bow. And um, this is some lace and I'm gonna be tying this on to this basket that actually I already had. Um, I'm gonna tie it on with lace instead of twine. You could use anything, um, but since I already had my lace out, I decided I would use that. And so I've got, <laughs> I need to push that lace back into that basket because I wanna tie it on the inside of it. So I'm twisting it around and then I'm using my little tweezers to kind of poke a hole in that basket and stick it in. And this is just going to be um, a little sign that will hang on the basket. Um, but think about it, you know, we've got Christmas coming up and all kind of holidays. So little signs, you can hang them on your basket to match the different holidays. And you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I like to have multiple uses for different things. And so this is just a sweet little sign that I'll hang on my basket and just to kind of celebrate the fall season. And I just push it through and then I tie it back on the back and then I put, I'm gonna be putting that messy bow, I think that's what they call it. Um, Teresa on Our Green Acres, she makes those a lot and she, the ones that she makes are gorgeous. Um, and so um, I think that's what they call them. So I'm going to be gluing that on. And then one of the things that you're going to see is um, there is an IOD lock and key mold. And I had one of the little locks and I already had it made up. And because I like to keep molds already made up and I just kind of hang it on to that little messy bow. And then I tie that on with the little lace ribbon. See that little piece right there? It's just, it's just something extra. 
just it adds another dimension to it and it just gives a little bit more character so that it's not just a sign on a basket but it just adds so much interest to it and I put that little messy bow on with my low temperature hot glue gun and here's the final piece and I just think it's so sweet um, and um, this is actually a basket and these are some flowers that I've had a couple years so I really can't tell you where I got these flowers but I just think they're so pretty and I love browns and greens and neutrals um, in the fall. Of course, I like a lot of different colors. I'm just not a fan of that really bright orange. Now, here's all of our pieces today. We are already at the end of the video. And there's my little lights um, in my little jars with my little um, leaf hole punches on it. And I've got my basket and I've got my little plaque that's got the Grecian urn on it. And I couldn't fit in the little dresser in on this particular part of the video. So you'll see it one more time. So in the comments today, let me know what was your favorite today. And are you already starting to decorate for fall? Um, once it starts hitting close to time for school to start, I just kind of get it in me. I'm, I'm ready to start decorating for fall because after it won't be too much longer before we're going to be ready for Christmas so I want to enjoy fall while I can but this is really pretty and I will be putting this in my booth because well I just don't need it at my house um, but I really like the way that it turned out so what do you think but guys I hope that you have a great week and thank you so much for all of your support y'all are just the best and you always leave me the sweetest comments and I just feel like so many of you are becoming my friends on YouTube and that's a really special feeling um, and that's what I love about YouTube but make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and share it out with a friend so that others can can become part of our family have a great week